Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This is the first video in a series of videos on Unit 2 in the GCSE Business Exam. Uh, this video is going to very briefly introduce the unit and then look at e-commerce, which is the first topic in the unit. <clears throat> um, so, Unit 2 is a really crucial unit. The unit is called Influences on Business, and you can see that these are the two exam papers. Units one and two are assessed in, you know, across both papers. So when you're preparing for the exams, the operations, human resources, unit marketing, finance, they're um, assessed in separate exams. But the first two units appear in both exams. So these are kind of foundational units that you need to have a really strong understanding of. So the whole topic is called influences on business. Um, if you were at A level, you would study all of these different in, um, influences on business, which can be summarised as PESL. We're going to just have a look at a small number of these in the GCSE, one of them being technological, and that leads us into the subject of digital communication and e-commerce, which, which is the first topic in Unit 2. So what is digital communication? Well, it involves using electronic channels um, such as wiring, fiber optics, wireless transmitters to transfer data between people and organizations. You will be very familiar with digital communication. This is an area that is uh, you know, growing very, very rapidly. Uh, computers, um, mobile phone signals, wireless communication, internet, voice over internet protocol, using apps on your phone to communicate with businesses. Essentially, digital communication means, it means communicating in binary, using the language of binary ones and zeros, um, which is essentially the language of computers and how they communicate with each other. And I'm including in that mobile phones using kind of computing technology. Um, you know, Twitter, Facebook, uh, these uh, apps may well, you know, this is an area that is changing very, very quickly. So by the time you watch this video, they may well be outdated. And indeed, I don't think uh, people in the younger generation particularly use Facebook anymore. Um, but uh, it's had a massive impact on, on businesses and continues to do so and will continue to do so in the future. So e-commerce is an area that lots and lots of businesses are getting into and it's having a huge impact on um the UK economy. If you listen to the business news, a lot of it's about how kind of the high street is struggling, those kind of traditional stores where you've got stuff in. People aren't using that so much. They're using websites to shop on, and that, that's called e-commerce. It's the buying and selling of goods and services and or the transmission of funds or data using electronic uh, network such as the internet Now that's a huge definition you know it covers an awful lot of stuff um, but this is a, a huge area of growth and e-commerce covers um, uh, you know a very wide area now you can see um, the amount of money spent on e-commerce I mean this goes up to 2018 I'm recording this in early 2019 so this is you know, kind of up to date as I'm speaking, you can see the trend is certainly for uh, huge growth in e-commerce sales. Most of that conducted on standard kind of desktops with people um, uh, doing 62% of their online shopping from like a, a, a PC, a desktop. But we're also seeing growth in the number of tablets being used to buy things and even uh, mobile phones um, being used to uh, purchase goods and services. And that's actually called M-commerce and is studied in the sixth unit. It comes up as something that you need to know about. But essentially, e-commerce, you can see the trend is for a, a big rise in the amount of stuff that's been sold on the internet in recent years. So how's that impacted businesses? Well, these are kind of generic advantages to a business of having a website and engaging in e-commerce, i.e. selling their stuff over the internet. We're going to get a wider geographical target market. So previously, if I were running a bookshop, say, you know, my, my target market might be people within, I don't know, a 10 mile radius. Now that I'm selling my books on the internet, I can potentially sell 
uh, all over the UK. Books are a very good thing to sell on the internet. Amazon obviously did it. You know, they're kind of they're postable, so it's quite a good product to sell um, over the internet. You know, it's not big and clunky and very expensive to post. So it opens up a wide geographical target market, whereas previously it might have only been people in the local area. It's better data collection for businesses. You know, just think about it. If you walk into a shop and you buy, like, I don't know, a shirt and a pair of jeans, then you walk out, the business has got your money, sure, but they don't have any other information about you. When you buy online, the business has your email, it has your address, often it might like ask you for your age and things like that and so they can collect quite a lot of data about you so they know who's buying their products and they can use that data um, you know just as simply as sending you an email saying you know did you like our jeans you know we've got them on sale now something like that but they can also collect large amounts of data and they see who's buying their clothes and then they can target their marketing much better you get a 24-7 shop front, which basically means people can shop there all the time. You're not, you know, kind of standard working hours, nine till five. You know, people can shop in the evening, at weekends, even in the middle of the night if they want, that's fine. The This is going to reduce your startup costs. So previously, if I wanted to start a bookshop, I'd have had to, you know, buy get and rent, rent a building at the very least, paint a sign, buy a till, by you know kit the shop out in terms of fixtures and fittings these days I don't have to do that I can literally just run a business from my home um, I don't need to make it look all great because if I'm just doing it online and sending stuff out by post no one's ever going to see my business so therefore we're reducing expenditure on property I don't need a shop uh, necessarily um, more effective advertising spending that, that relates to the fact that I've got better a collection of data for my business. I'm not just guessing who my target market are. I know who they are because I've collected data on them. Um, I'm going to benefit from economies of scale if selling online increases my sales. I can buy in bulk off my suppliers. Uh, I don't know what I've wrote, written reduced requirements for. Um, delete that. Um, and customers are able to kind of review your good service and you can get people leaving. Um, uh, reviews that are, uh, are favourable to your business. However, it's going to require you to spend money on computer equipment. Maybe you need to outsource the running of the website. It's not a huge expenditure, to be honest. The running of the website that can be done relatively cheaply these days. Um, but certainly, you'll probably need some computer equipment. Maybe you'll need to retrain some of your workers. So, you know, if you're a big business doing this, you're, you're certainly going to need. Uh, people working in some sort of warehouse, you might need to train delivery drivers. If you, you know, if you've been previously kind of a retail-based business, moving over to e-commerce, you know the the jobs that your workers are doing are going to have to change to a certain extent, and that can create costs. Big disadvantage is that customers can't try products. Okay. Maybe you've had an experience where you bought something online and it wasn't quite what you expected. I actually bought a watch online once and um, it was far bigger than I thought it was and it really didn't suit me. And, um, you know, I'm actually quite wary these days of buying any clothes or anything that I can't try on uh, online. Customers might lack trust in online businesses. Um, that t seems to be changing over time, but certainly uh, sometimes people don't trust online businesses. Uh, we lose face-to-face -face interaction with consumers. If I'm running a business, sometimes it's very helpful for me to, you know, just see who's in my shop browsing and just talk to them about what they want. You don't see who's browsing on the internet. Uh, the benefit of having a shop and interacting with your customers is that you can ask them questions. You can, um, you know, give them free samples. You can provide that kind of personal customer service that you can't do online. And of course, customers can leave poor reviews as well on your website. So huge area of business, regularly a question, should a business you know, create a website, should a business expand its website? Um, important to know a little bit about that.